Assalamu alaikum, hello students, and a very, very good afternoon to all of you, a very good evening as well. So, yes, uh, <clears throat> welcome to another reinforcement lesson for subject English, and inshallah, I'll be uploading for uh, the history as well. Uh, so, yeah, let's get started. So, dear students, today our topic is going to be about poetic license. Uh, we will be definitely looking at connectives, connectives as well. Um, including that, uh, we will be definitely uh, looking into the poetry part, the Sun Quin poems as well and uh, all of the topics that we have been, let's say, covered so far and which are actually going to be important for our test as well, all right? So, speaking of poetry at play, uh, 6.1, poetic license, right? So, now, first, first things first, you have to understand over here that uh, what does the word poet, poetry, poem, what do they mean? They mean, uh, for example, maybe you are writing a poem, uh, you are writing a poetry, and usually in the classroom, as I gave you an example, that uh, we have these different songs, singers singing different songs. So what is it actually? Uh, that is, uh, those are actually poems, which are, they are, let's say, you know, integrated with, uh, you know, different rhythms, with different musical instruments. And then, you know, that's how they create a song, right? Now, <clears throat> exactly the same thing. Uh, uh, let's say, you know, in Fustrum, we have been understanding that what's poem writing, we have understood there are different types of poems, I mean, like we have stanzas, we have couplets, we have sequins, uh, we have limericks as well, uh, sequins are usually five-line poetry, and say, and by the way, limerick is also a five-line uh, stanza poetry, uh, but it's a, they have a little bit difference between both of them, right? Now, uh, speaking of which, speaking of which, uh, we had another interesting topic uh, called poetic license. So, if you remember that in the class, uh, according to my mood, we did play this on a speaker. And uh, the way actually this particular singer, uh, Benjamin Zephania, uh, this particular guy, the way he was singing, it was, let's say, quite a little bit fun, okay? He wasn't actually singing, but he was trying to maybe, you know, <clears throat> sing it like a rap song, something like that. And, uh, and, and, and the structure, the structure here, if you see, so... Uh, let's say he is writing the way he likes, he is rhyming the way he likes, and uh, he's putting the punctuation marks the way he likes. So it's very informal, very colloquial, and uh, at the same time, not actually, you know, following a designated pattern. Uh, if you remember that in Limerick, uh, we studied about rhyming scheme, that line one should rhyme with line three, line uh, four should line with uh, rhyme with... Uh, rhyme with line two. So actually there was a scheme that we had to follow. But over here, it's totally up to you. It's not a very important to, let's say, you know, uh, write in a, such a very, you know, good way or something like that. So, for example, here it says that uh, in pairs, discuss some poetry writing rules and share them with the class. Does everyone agrees on the same rules? And explain what do you, th uh, uh, what you think uh, about the poetic license and what does it actually mean, so right? So uh, we did this exercise in our Bhava workbooks as well and how this thing needs to be done. So now you have to understand this thing that uh, maybe in the exams or maybe in our upcoming test paper, uh, we will be definitely, you know, blending out some topics over here. Uh, maybe, you know, we can ask, the, the teacher might ask you that uh, write a synquin using the poetic license pattern. So uh, speaking of pattern layout, Usually in everything in English, in English literature or in English composition, uh, we usually follow a pattern, a layout for different exercises. For example, speaking of formal letter writing. Now, if you remember in the very beginning, uh, <clears throat> in the formal letter writing, uh, we were actually following a dedicated structure that it, that particular thing needs to be done in a, a very formal structure. And uh, same like that. Uh, we studied different types of essay, for example, expo uh, expository essays, um, narrative essays, and uh, persuasive essays. So actually, we were following a structure of essays, for example, introduction, body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and the conclusion. So exactly like that, exactly like the same concept, we have to integrate that over here as well. Poetic license is actually a pattern, a layout, where you do not care whether you're uh, verses, verses means lines, the poetry lines, uh, the poem lines, uh, you don't have to care whether they are rhyming with each other, the kind of punctuation you're using, the kind of language you're using, formal, informal, colloquial, whatever you're integrating, it doesn't matter. 
And a simple definition of a synquin is that something, uh, a poetry or poem, consisting of five different lines, right? So though now, now, for example, if a question is like, uh, for example, that write a synquin, write a limerick, write a couplet, write a stanza, uh, let's say write a quintin, uh, using poetic license. So what a person understands from that? A person clearly understands from that that actually they are asking us that uh, write five line, four line, two line poetry by using the poetic license pattern. So I hope it's pretty clear. There is not, uh, not let's say, much explanation to that. However, uh, just to practice yourself, you can actually write it down as well. And if you remember that in our classroom, we did practice uh, in our workbooks as well, as well as on the soft board as well. And uh, a couple of students were able to actually, you know, write the poetry in the notebooks as well. So now, for example, uh, if I go to another page, right? So now actually going, so this is 6.1. So let's fast forward to the exercise in the workbook. So in your words, explain the meaning of the term poetic license. Just try to write here and this will give you a good opportunity to complete the workbook at, at the same time. So see, read the poem one day and answer the questions. Now this is by Trioni August, right? And this is let's say more than, it's not a let's say synquin, okay? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, so the six line poetry, right? And not the, only the first stanza is six line, but it goes on and on. So based on this, we have to understand and identify and then answer these questions. For example, what punctuation marks are mentioned in the poem day one or one day? Does the poem use punctuation marks and why? Describe the mood of uh, of the voice, right? Rewrite one, uh, rewrite the poem one day using correct punctuation and complete sentences. Explain the difference in the effect in how the poem looks and sound. So now what you have to do is just understand that how does how does this poem sounds like and how does this poem sounds like the one you are actually going to write, okay? But in order to crack the exam, crack the test and understand your concepts, make them clear, uh, it's really important for you just do not stress yourself, don't think about any anything else, but try to write, try to construct a five-line synquin poem or a limerick or a couplet, or maybe a quintin, a six-line poetry, or a seven-line poetry, or an eight-line poetry. It depends on you. Remember, in the class, we had a competition that, let's say, you know, let's see who passes the uh, the, the barricade of uh, 19 lines, 20 lines, and the students, and you all were, like, you know, doing an amazing job. Some of you did pass the mark of, let's say, 17 or 18 lines as well. So, yeah, proud. Of, be proud of yourself. <coughs> so, sorry for that. So... This is how you have to uh, look into the poetic license. So, uh, uh, guys, speaking of which, now you have some time, so why don't you write down a synquin or a couplet or a six line or seven line poetry by using uh, the strategy, the pattern of uh, poetic license. And you can definitely submit your homework by mailing me on my work address, uh, work email address, which I'm gonna put down in the description box. So if you want to get it checked, if you want to want my comments or replies, I do have all of your numbers, phone numbers as well. So just email me your work, your production, your piece of writing if you want it to get checked. So yep, I, I can definitely do that for you. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, uh, give a thumbs up and uh, wait for another video because now it's going to be a series of different videos for English as well as for history. So guys, see you in the next video. Until next one.